let us understand about the sources well, not, I'll, I'll just write it in the middle sources of energy the sources of energy are basically divided into conventional sources of energy and the non-conventional sources of energy these conventional sources are further divided into two categories one is the commercial and the second is non-commercial sources what do you mean by sources of energy sources of energy basically mean how do you generate energy how do you get energy so what are the sources just like you have a river which is a source of water there are sources of energy also which are provided by the nature some of them being conventional some of them being non-conventional which are coming lately into picture conventional basically means let's take this part first Conventional sources of energy means the sources which have been in existence for centuries and decades and you know a long long period of time. Let's take one of them one by one. These are further divided into commercial and non-commercial. Commercials are the one which are traded. Traded in the market. This could be the case even for non-commercial one, but the relative quantum is pretty low, relatively low. Now, when you say these are traded in the market, what are these? These are basically coal. This is petroleum. This is electricity. There are companies which are into commercial production of these three so coal is one of the largest means of energy in India but for that matter depending on your geography it's one of the largest means which is used across the globe please understand that energy as a means is one of the most important concern of every country because those countries which are low in energy to meet their economic activities have to import them and they pay huge huge prices for that let me give you an example in india oil or petrol as we call it is short in production so you import it from gulf countries india pays a bomb of money to these countries to get the petrol so if you don't have resources of energy or these are low then your economic activity is lopsided towards the worst side. So commercial resources are the ones basically which are bought and sold in the market. I mean, not every individual will own coal resources. Will he? No. Is the government who allocates these coal blocks? None of the individual, even if he can, I mean, even if you kind of dig out your own house, get some petrol there, you don't have a right to that. It's the government who has the right to that. So these are bought and sold in the market. Can you generate electricity at your home? Maybe to some extent. The moment you start generating it, you will go and buy and sell it. Now the non-commercial sources are basically the sources like cow dungs. Typically in villages, the cow dung is used as a fuel to cook food and you might be surprised that I mean I'm assuming that if you are using the internet you are definitely one of those lucky ones who doesn't have to use cow dung as a biofuel but a large mass of Indian population even today use cow dung as a fuel measure because for them the kerosene oil which is the alternate for this is pretty expensive they can't afford it so they use this cow dung as a means of fuel okay second is firewood this is again you go and cut down trees 
use the wood that of that, burn it, and use it as a form of energy to cook food. I mean, even the woods are bought and sold in the market, but the quantum is really low. Third is agricultural waste. Even this is used as a means of energy. So that's the difference between the commercial and the non-commercial ones. Now, the difference between these two, and which is extremely significant, is that these commercial resources are exhaustible. In the sense that once you have a coal resource, you start extracting coal from it, coal takes hundreds and thousands of years to get developed. So once you extract the entire set of coal reserves, it will become zero. And it will actually take that period which it has taken over the thousands of years to create coal again. Whereas the non-commercial sources are renewable. What do you mean by renewable? Let's say cow dung. The cow will give dung every day. Firewood. You can plant more trees and as trees grows, there are some varieties which grow very fast. You will have firewood in your future again. Okay, so this was insofar as conventional sources of energy were concerned. Now let's move on to the second one, non-conventional. Now of late you would have read about solar energy, wind energy. So what happens there? In solar energy, you use the heat of the sun by using certain panels to generate electricity. This is a recent phenomenon in India which is being started. Wind energy, again, you must have heard about windmills. What do windmills do? Windmills use the air to generate energy. As of now, these means of energy are not feasible because the cost of production is very high. I mean, it will take some time for cost to come down, but as of now, the cost of production is pretty high. But these are the ones which are non-conventional, but very important. Why? Because these reduce the dependency of a country on other countries for sources of energy. And in future, you will see more and more, more and more investments being channeled into these areas. 